بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وهدى وتقى ورشادا برحمتك يا رحمن الرحيمين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل ربنا زدنا علما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع من قلب لا يخشع من نفس لا تشبع من دعوة لا يستجاب لها نعوذ بك اللهم من هؤلاء الأربع أما بعد فيقول الله عز وجل إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah does not feel shy in citing any example, any parable, whether it be uh, that of a mosquito or something that is above it. طيب. There are two um, opinions or two aqwal uh, with regards to why this ayah was revealed. And some say because, the, so some say that there was a sabab nuzul. There was a reason for this ayah to be revealed. What was that reason? The reason was that the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave examples of the munafiqeen or gave examples for the munafiqeen and he cited examples for them and he said, And the other example that he mentioned. Um, and also that when, when he gave examples for, for mushrikeen, so he gave example of, um, of al-ankabut, مثل الذين يدعون من دون الله أولياء كمثل عنكبوت اتخذت بيتا يعني those who commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's as, it's as if the, the, يعني the weakness of their action is like the uh, feebleness and weakness of the, uh, of the of the spider's web uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave the example of the creation of a dhubab, a, a dhubab, which is in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal nas, dhurib mathalun fastami'u lah, inna alladhina yad'una min duni allahi, inna alladhina tad'una min duni allahi, lan yakhluqu dhubaban, walau ijtama'u lah. They will not even create a fly, even if they all gather for that. So the mushrikeen, they objected the mushrikeen and the munafiqeen they objected that what sort of examples are these allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high and above yani, in stature to yani, cite such examples so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to their objection by saying in allah la yastahi an yadriba mathalan ma ba'udatan fama fawqaha ila akhir la so this is the first qawl the second qawl is that it is not a, a, a response to their objection rather it is another example that is being cited for the munafiqeen and just like the mosquito when it yani, uh, yani, it, 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 it becomes it becomes fat it dies and as long as it's 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 hungry it keeps itself uh, hungry as the the lesser it uh, drinks and uh, consumes the blood the uh, more the, are the chances of it uh, uh, living a, a longer t for a longer time. So, uh, so they said that this is an example for the munafiqeen that they die and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes their lives and uh, snatches their dunya away from them when they have yani, uh, had enough of the dunya, when they have consumed enough of the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes it away from, from them. So these are two aqwal. One says that this was an objection from the mushrikeen and munafiqeen and Allah responded to that objection. The second says that this is an example for the munafiqeen again, that they are just like the mosquito when they are full, when they fill their stomachs with the dunya and when they fill them, their desires with the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then snatches it away from them. Looking at the ayah itself and looking at the rest of the ayah, which of the two Aqwal, or which of the two Qawlain is the correct one? Which of the two Qawls is the correct one? Is looking at the ayah itself, from the ayah.
the first one. طيب, how, how can you uh, can you cite some uh, يعني evidence for your uh, يعني preference that why is the, why does the first one seem to be the more correct opinion within the ayah? It's within the ayah. Uh, is it uh, the sentence uh, by this he let many go astray? Ahsant, this is because now then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the reality which is any Amaladina kafaru fa yakununa mada arada Allah bihada mathala Amaladina amanu fa yalamuna anahu al haqqu min rabbihim. And if they believe the kuffar, they disbelieve, you dilu bihi kathiran, Allah misguides a lot, lot of people and he guides a lot of people through these uh, examples that he cites. Looking at the end, all of this, يعني, uh, looking at the ayah, يعني, from, from فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَىٰ آخِرَ الْآيَةِ This indicates, a, it gives a very strong indication that this is a response to some objection of theirs. That this is a response to some objection of, of theirs. So this is, wallahu alam the more correct opinion and it has been يعني, preferred by the Mufassirin like At-Tabari and Ghayri. <clears throat> in the ayahs before this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدِعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ There if you are, يعني, if, 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 يعني, uh, if, if, if you are in doubt about the Qur'an, then bring, bring to us a Qur'an like it in its eloquence, in its bayan, in its uh, uh, impec impeccability, yeah, uh, or impeccableness. So what is the munasaba yani, uh, of this ayah with that which was mentioned before this? Yani, what, ha what is the relation of this ayah, inna Allah la yastahi an yadriba mathalan ma ba'udatan fa ma fawqaha, with what was mentioned before it, from the ijaz of the Quran and that the Quran is mu'jiz and it's a perfect speech and it's uh, yani, miraculously eloquent, etc. What is the relation between this ayah and that? What is the relation of this ayah with the challenge that was given to the kuffar that if they are in doubt about the Quran, then let them bring a Quran like this one in its eloquence and its bayan. Uh, I, th I think it's that everything that Allah has said to now is like true and it's nothing's false. That's the relationship between the two ayahs. Okay, let me just help you out a little. Like why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, or, or why is this uh, place more suitable to to respond to this objection. Why is it more suitable to respond to the objection of the mushrikeen and munafiqeen after mentioning the, you know, the, the ijaz, the mu'jiz of the Quran? It seems, it seems there's uh, similitudes that um, they seem to be belittling. Uh, the similitudes that Allah has set forth that they seem to be belittling is contained in the same book that uh, is miraculous and they have, that they have failed to come up with. So it's mm -hmm. um, important to remind them of this so that they do not uh, belittle those similitudes set forth. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Like... <clears throat> Allahu A'lam, this was discussed in, uh, we can refer to uh, Tahir ibn Ashur in Tahrir al-Tanweer. The Mushrikun and the Munafiqun, they didn't find anything to object. Yani, when it comes to the eloquence of the Quran, they don't find anything to object against, right? Yani, what would they object from the Quran? Yani, they cannot, it's, it's the best of speech by their acknowledgement, right? So now, what is left for them? They, you know, they pick and pick up these 
these يعني, uh, these examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and they make up an objection so that they could somehow somehow try to imply or somehow imply that this the Quran is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Its eloquence was mu'jiz. It was a miracle. So from this aspect, they could not object. What did they try to object? From which aspect? They, they created a fallacy. What was that fallacy? They said, oh, Allah is so great in stature that it does not befit him to cite a mosquito and a fly and a spider as examples. To cite the similitude of a mosquito or a fly or a, a, a spider. So they created this fallacy in order to object the uh, yani, fact that Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They could not object it from the aspect of its eloquence. So they had to create something, they had to create a fallacy. And this is the, this is the yani, habit of the kuffar. When they fail to um, uh, yani, uh, overcome the Muslims with hujjah, with evidence, they create fallacies. They create fallacies. So now, for example, in the recent events, there is, a, there is this yani, huge uh, uh, yani, stupidity that is called free of uh, freedom of speech, right? So they create this, this sort of con concept in order to justify, <coughs> uh, justify their, their, um, uh, their actions. So this is how, uh, how, how will they overcome Islam if they're unable to do it uh, with hujjah, with evidence, they create some fallacies and then they present to, uh, present to us as, 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 as their evidence. Likewise, freedom of speech in recent events has been, been presented to us as evidence and justification for their actions, which it is not, which is it, which it is not, because there is no absolute freedom of speech anywhere in the world. It is not possible in the first place, because speech does have its repercussions, it has its consequences, and when there are consequences and when there is harm, then it must be stopped. So there is no absolute freedom of speech. So this is a fallacy that they make up in order to <clears throat> justify their actions and their hatred against Islam. Likewise, the Munafiqin, they came up with this, that Allah is so great in stature that it does not befit him, his, his rank, that he cites examples of a mosquito and a fly. But, yani, where did they bring this up from? Yani, the, yani, if, if you, if you uh, think, think about it, and if you reflect on this, as long as the purpose is to, uh, to explain the truth, as long as the purpose is to explain the truth, it is fine to bring up any example, be it of something that is as little as a mosquito or be it of something that is bigger in, in, its, in its meanness, right? So the, the purpose of bringing the example uh, by, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to, is, to, is to clarify the truth to us. It has got nothing to do with the stature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can quote any example. It does not affect my stature, my rank whatsoever let alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was a fallacy that, made up, that they made up and they came up with. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ So this, uh, so, okay. Now if the, if the ayah uh, is in response to the objection of the mushrikeen, so the ayat that were addressing the mushrikeen of Mecca, they were being re revealed where? Where were they being, uh, being revealed? In Makkah or in Medina, the ayat that address the objections of the mushrikeen. Hi, Akhwa. Makkah. In Makkah. Hi. Where is Surah Al Baqarah revealed? Medina. Hi. <clears throat> Al An, if we say that these, 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 uh, these, this is a response to the this response also to the objection of the mushrikeen. Then why is there a delay in the response? Or what is the benefit or what is the reason for a delay in the response? <clears throat> what is the reason for the delay in response? Perhaps because um, something similar would also come up from the unbelievers in Medina from amongst the Christians, from amongst the Jews. Montage. And, um, Montage. So the, Mustafa says because now it's uh, yani this response ha, is inclusive of the objection of the mushrikeen and of the munafiqeen. So yani, we, yani, 
there is, this was a response to the objection of two types of people. In this way, we, it was uh, yani, uh, possible to address the objections of two types of people. Right, this is number one. <clears throat> number two is that <clears throat> sometimes, yani, this, is, this was mentioned, it's a yani, beautiful point that was mentioned by Tahir ibn Ashur in Tahrir al He said that if someone yani, objects against uh, uh, someone who is generous, he says that he's miserly and stingy. So sometimes it is more effective and it's a greater response when you respond by the action or when you respond when you show off the generosity the next time. So for example, if someone says if, uh, to someone who is Kareem and generous, he says this is, he's bakhil, he does not spend. So what he does is he does not respond at that very moment, rather he waits until the next time he has a chance to show how generous he is so he spends a lot and then he respond, responds with his action and then responds to his, his, his uh, objection verbally as well. So likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions the examples and uses the amthal and similitudes the next time, so this was the, this was the suitable time to, uh, to, uh, to address their objection. So in Medina, in Surah Al-Baqarah, two examples are being mentioned for the munafiqeen. مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا أَوْ كَصَيِّبٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعْبٌ So this is the right time to respond to their, to their objection, to their objection. So this was yani, uh, mentioned by, uh, this is the khulasa summary of why the response to the i'tirad, the objection of the mushrikeen, why was it delayed? Because that's the, because the next time Allah is mentioning examples and using amthal is in, is in Medina. So it's, it's, it's greater it's a greater response when it's coupled with the with the action. أَنْ يَضْرِبَ مَثَلًا مَا بَعُوضَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا For those who have yani, previous uh, some sort of learning of Arabic, what is this ma here? Isim Mawsul. Isim Mawsul. Taib. What is the role of Isim Mawsul here? Yani what does it uh, indicate? Or what does it yani, indicate here? What meaning does it give here? It, uh, this uh, descriptive, it, it, it described the... Uh... <laughs> there are a few things that have been said about this ma here. <clears throat> Some say it's ism mausul, so it's it's in the meaning of alladi. But an yadriba mathalan alladi huwa ba'uda tun fama fawqaha. But they say that the ba'uda tun was made mansub because it was uh, adjacent to an, a mansub uh, word. So this is yani, possible in the Arabic language. Even though it was supposed to, it's and it's supposed to be marfur, but it's been made mansub. It's also possible in the Arabic language. This is the the opinion of Al Imam Al Tabari. Um, some say that this ma was added to make uh, the word more make yeah, make make it uh, yeah, make the masalan more ambiguous and more yani yeah, mubham mubham. Yani unknown. So, so for example, it's there's a slope in Arabic. You, you we use like we say, um, uh, do you say that where did you where did you where did you read this uh, faida from? So you will say qara'tuhu fi kitabim ma. So why do you use this ma here? You use this ma to to emphasize that it was some book. I don't know which which book it was. Some book, right? Kitabum ma, some book. Okay, instead of saying from a book, you said some book. Yani, I'm not sure which one it is. So ma here adds uh, ambiguity to your knowledge of, uh, or ambiguity to uh, the book. Yani, instead of saying a book, which, which is a particular book, you're saying some book, and I'm not sure which book it was. Right? So, or, or from, you can, you can also translate it as some, any book. Yani. 
طيب uh, likewise you might say in Arabic um, uh, <coughs> like we say رجل ما مثلا تقول رجل ما رجل ما قتل مثلا you want to say that some man some man or any man some man killed him يعني just to add make it more مبهم make it more مبهم even though if you had said if you had said a man killed him it would hold also have meant that it's not a particular man that you know. But you, in order to add more ambiguity, you'd say some man killed him, not sure who it is, any, or it's not important. Right? Okay. Any example. Allah, Allah does not feel shy, in, feel shy in citing any example. Any, some example, any example, you see? That's why here, Mustafa Khattab, Dr. Mustafa Khattabi, translated it as it has any parable. Any example. Any parable. Any this was the opinion, يعني, or this is uh, this has also been mentioned by the Mufassirin. What is also mentioned here is that ma here has been added for tawqeed to add emphasis, like فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ So it's also, all of this is possible. It's, it can be some Mosul, it can be to add ambiguity, any, any example. Any, this is not the point here, what, how the example is, any, any example. Allah does not feel shy in citing it, be it this or be it that. Right? Or it could be to add emphasis. Like, مثلا ما whether it be بعوضةً فما فوقها whether it be the example or the parable or similitude of a mosquito or what is above it طيب فما فوقها ما معنى فما فوقها what is the meaning of فما فوقها فما فوقها what is above it something that is greater than the mosquito some, or something that is lower than even the mosquito يعني Can carry both meaning, Sheikh. Uh, greater or smaller? Ah, Mumtaz. It can carry both meanings. It can carry both meanings. It can refer to فَمَا فَوْقَهَا يعني Above it in, in terms of its weakness. Because the mosquito, and it was narrated by from, from Qatad and uh, others from the Salaf, that mosquito is أَضْعَفُ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ It's the weakest of the, of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, أضعف خلق الله فما فوقها يعني في الضعف or or يعني يعني uh, what is above it يعني what is even weaker than it or it can mean فما فوقها يعني mosquito and what is greater than a mosquito يعني uh, يعني going above in strength it can carry both the meanings. الإمام الطبري says uh, because uh, the, because قتادة from the Salaf he said that uh, the mosquito is the أضعف خلق الله is the weakest of the creation of Allah he says فما فوقها means Yani above mosquito, because there is nothing weaker than the mosquito. And others say that it can carry both meanings. يعني even weaker than a, a mosquito, or it can also mean stronger than a mosquito. You can, uh, you can like for example, you can say in Arabic, Fulanun Bakhil, Bal Fawqal Bakhil. And he is miserly. In fact, he is more than miserly. So, Fawqa in Arabic sometimes is used to denote the meaning of more. Yani Fama Fawqaha, yani more weak. Right? Like you said, بخيل, بخيل, not just بخيل, not just miserly, rather he's more than miserly, more than stingy. Yani, uh, uh, next level in, 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 in Bukhul. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ As for those who have believed, they, they know that it is the haq from their Lord. Why the haq? Why just why 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 not just أنه حق من ربهم؟ Is the only truth. كيف يا إخوان؟ Is the only truth. Only truth. Only one. Right. Only أحسن طيب. And Taha, what were you saying? Yeah, I was saying the same thing. طيب. Yeah. Only only truth to add uh, uh, emphasis on the fact that this is truth. This is the truth. This is not. Part of truth, in fact, this is the whole of truth. This is the truth. This adds emphasis. They say, that as for the kuffar, they say that what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intend by this 
uh, example or by this uh, as an example yudillu bihi kathiran wa yahdi bihi kathira what do we benefit from this يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا. Look at the contrast of the results. The cause is one, but the results are far apart. That Subhanallah, the same thing can be caused for. That, that could be the cause for the guidance of some people. That very same thing can be the cause of misguidance for others. So sometimes, and, and, and look, and, and just reflect on the fact that this is kalam Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no guidance above the kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal. But even in kalam Allah Azza wa Jal, you find people being misguided by it. Subhanallah. That means that evidence has value to a certain extent. The strength of the evidence is valuable to a certain extent. After that, after that, yani, yani, you, you can only convince, uh, yani, convincing someone does not solely depend on the strength of your evidence. Your evidence might be the finest, but still someone would not be guided. Because guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a lesson for us in, the, in da'wah as well. Or in, for, 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 uh, or, or, in, or in nurturing our children as well. That, that we should also focus much on praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us and he, does, uh, and he makes our hearts steadfast upon the haqq. And he turns our hearts towards, towards his obedience. Because it is not all in the strength of the evidence, ya ikhwan. Smartest of people are sometimes the stupidest of people when it comes to some truths. So you find people who are really smart, but subhanAllah, they haven't been guided to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the greatest of truth. Yani subhanAllah, imagine... And if I, if I tell you a book was a book came into existence due to an explosion, you would never believe in that. But you would be, but they agree, uh, and they're fine with believing that the whole universe, with all any its complexity, it came into existence by itself. And it, how? And it, just imagine the sheer uh, foolishness of this notion. But and then realize the favor of Allah and the ni'mah of Allah upon you that He guided you to the truth that is Islam. And and, and many of us who were born in Muslim families. Same haqq, same source, same evidence, strongest of evidences, strongest of uh, 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 ideas, but the results are, yani, subhanAllah, different. So lots of our focus should be on, 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 on beseeching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us and he makes us steadfast upon the truth. In addition, to consolidating our uh, beliefs with by reading uh, evidences and finding any strong evidences for our for our beliefs. Aren't the people who are upon guidance قليل وقليل من عبادي الشكور وقليل ما هم aren't the قليل so how is ويهدي به كثيرا يعني how do you how do you reconcile between yahdi bihi kathiran and then on the other hand that the people who gain guidance are qalil ha ya akhwa Here, the subject on hand is the mathal. يُضِلُّ بِالْمَثَلْ يُضِلُّ بِهِ He just misguides with the mathal كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِ بِهِ كَثِيرًا So it can be said that the people 
not yani generally who are misguided rather who are misguided by the mathal would be similar in number by with the people who have been guided by the or due to the mathal due to the example that has been given that's number one because when we say the people who are misguided are greater in number that's general that's because of the mathal yani they are misguided due to this examples that allah subhanahu cites and they are misguided due to other reasons as well so alhamdulillah this is number one secondly what also helps here yani uh, uh, kathiran yani when you just look at them yani in absolute sense yani the people who have been guided through these examples are also great in number yani merely looking at them what yahdi bi kathira what what benefits uh, yani uh, uh, the benefit of describing them as kathir here is that if they were described as qalil what would happen this would yani yani this would be a little confusing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is citing an example as a hujja as an evidence what sort of a hujja is it that is a cause for misguidance of more people than the guidance of people so hulala this would yani this would bring down in yani in stature the evidence that has been mentioned by allah this is the yani allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he mentions examples and similitudes they are the greatest of evidences so how come they could or how is it possible that they could not yani be a source of guidance for lots of people rather they guide less people and more people are misguided because of them so this would yani uh, yani it would cease to be an evidence it would cease to be an hujj a hujja طيب so that's why that's why this is the an, a benefit that we gain when when it is said wa yahdi bihi kathiran wa ma yudillu bihi illa al fasiqin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not misguide through this examples or this example except through except those who are fasiqin who are the fasiqin what is the meaning of fasiq corrupted okay what is the linguistic meaning of fasaqa fa fasaqa an amri rabbihi this is key here fa fasaqa an amri rabbihi fasaqa linguistically refers to exiting and khuruj yani exiting something right So fasaqa in sharia is used for those who access uh, exit the the obedience of Allah the circle of the obedience of Allah and they go out of yani of, of iman or they go out of the obedience of Allah usually fasiq is used for sinful people yani those who have entered the iman but they go uh, and they have agreed and uh, to to abide by the laws of Allah and to obey Allah but then they go out of the yani obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it says yani al fasiq they, they define it in arabic as al kharij an ta'atillah the one who has who has went out of the obedience of allah al kharij an ta'atillah but sometimes fasiq can be used for kuffar as well fasiq can be used for kuffar as well so how is that possible that is possible like here it is being used for people who are kuffar fasiqin so it is also possible to be used for the, for, for the for the for the kuffar in the sense that they yani have gone out of what was supposed to be yani uh, yani uh, yani what is necessitated by their aql what is necessitated by their aql yani their their aql requires them and necessitates that they should follow the truth but they go out of this a uh, natural uh, response that 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 ought to be to towards the truth they go out of this by committing kufr so it can be used for for kuffar for kuffar as well uh طيب uh so only by this example or is it in general what exactly in general wa ma yudillu bihi the yani the do you mean the the the, the misguidance here yeah in this ayah wa ma yudillu bihi what does bihi refer to with what ba with what does this ha refer to ha. 
Daha refers to Mathalan. So here, in this context, only the example. وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ يُضِلُّ بِهِ يعني يُضِلُّ بِالْمَثَلِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ طيب نأتي الآن إلى الآية التالية الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه طيب فاسقين was general all sorts of فاسقين right now it's more become more specific الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويسدون في الأرض it's being made more specific by mentioning their characteristics not all فاسقين but the ones who do these and these, this and this uh, these particular acts before that the question is uh, what have we got to take from وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ From this ayah, ya ikhwan, we take something that is very important. And that is the reason for why, for which they were misguided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا فُلَانَ وَفُلَانَ وَفُلَانَ Particular people. Rather, he mentioned them by their attribute. By their characteristic, which was fusuq. This means that the reason for their misguidance was their fusuq. This goes on to show that sometimes, ya ikhwa, or many a times, your sins are a reason for further misguidance of yours. You will be further misguided. You will further lose the correct path. You will further go astray when you commit sins. The greater the sin you commit, the further you will the far the, the farther you will you go from from the from the iman. And wal aksu sahih. So here we can also apply qiyas al aks. That the better the greater the deeds you do, the better the deeds you do, the closer you will be from iman, and the more Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will guide you. Waladina tadau zadahum huda. Those who those who uh, accepted guidance. Zadahum huda. Allah increased them in their guidance. And on the other hand, uh, the, the people who are fasiqeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes them to further go astray. Zahu, qulubahum. For the Yahud Allah said, when they went astray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused their hearts to, 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 to go astray. So Beware the sins, ya ikhwan. These sins are not an easy matter. These are not a light matter. Subhanallah. Uh, the, one of the salaf, as he says, he says, I was deprived of night prayer for 20 nights because of one nadra, one sight of haram. Yani he, he, he intentionally might have yani been to the market and he saw a woman. So he intentionally looked towards her. Because of looking towards a woman, intentionally, he was deprived of 20 nights, Qiyam al-Layl. Imagine the evil and the shu'um that the sins bring to our lives. And they, the, the, imagine the great harm they cause to our iman. Remember, ya ikhwan, this iman is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a ni'mah from Allah. It's not something that you have earned yourself. This should be remembered by you. Always recall this fact, always remember this fact. So that you preserve the iman. You make your utmost effort to preserve the iman from these evils. This is your greatest saving. You know, something that you have saved all your life. How, how much would you exert an effort to protect it? Likewise, the iman is the greatest of savings. This is what is going to uh, yani, uh, cause, uh, or this is, this, is, this is what is going to, uh, or this is upon which uh, depends your success in the akhirah. So this is your greatest saving. So preserve it and protect it. How to protect it? Protect it from sins. Do not, do not let yourself easily fall into sins. And when you fall into sins, hasten to do, to do tawbah, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mu'minin are not the ones who do not commit sins. They do commit sins. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً Fahisha, grave sins. أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Or they oppress themselves. Great sins. ظُلْمُ nafs is does not refer to yani, small sins. ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَفَاحِشَةً the only the difference between muttaqin and ghayr al-muttaqin was Dhakarullah. They remember Allah. Dhakarullah fastaghfaru li dhunubihim. And then they repent and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. This is the difference between a mu'min and a, 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 a normal Muslim. 
a muttaqi, a person who fears Allah and who does not fear Allah. This is the difference. It's not that they don't commit sins, it's that they hasten in doing tawbah and in, 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 in making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not let these sins be a cause for further misguidance of yours. Remember, if you let yourself fall into sins and you do not repent, they will lead to kufr one day. Subhanallah, when you commit lots of sins in a certain uh, period of time, you would find yourself you would, fi you would find yourself weak in salah. You would find yourself lazy in, in performing prayer. Look how the sin affected your prayer. Just reflect on that. And look how if you continued and, and persisted in, in, in committing these sins, how they will cause you to leave the prayer altogether. They, you will start by, by feeling laziness uh, when, when you uh, stand up for prayer. Then you'll start by giving up some of the prayers and you'll end up by leaving all of the prayers. And then that, this amounts to kufr. So subhanallah, these sins might even lead you to kufr. So beware, beware the sins, beware the sins. And, may, and hasten in, in, in making repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ What is meant by the ahd of Allah, the covenant of Allah? What is it referring to here? And who are the people who have broken the covenant and violated the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What covenant of Allah is this ayah referring to, indicating towards? That first covenant that we had that, uh, I don't remember the exact word, but it's like uh, we obey or something like that. <clears throat> and when yeah. we were taken out from the backbone of Adam alayhi salam, and the, a covenant was taken from us, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمِ مِنْ ظُهُرِهِمْ دُرِّيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ أَمَا نَوْتْ يُرْ لُورْدْ قَالُوا بَلَا Yes, you are our Lord. Again, see, this is the usage of bala. Right? Yesterday we were discussing bala, صح? So bala is like, Alas to am I not your Lord? If, if, if you say na'am, that means yes, you're not our Lord, ma'adallah. If you say la, this is not a valid answer. So you say bala, that yes, you are our Lord. Qalu bala shahidina, we have witnessed and testified. An kunna this covenant that Allah has taken from us, this necessitates that we should not, that, that we not commit shirk. This necessitates that we should not commit shirk in this in this in this dunya and we should not commit kufr and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but does any one of us remember this covenant? Is, do you remember any when you were taken out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you remember that whole, whole occurrence? You don't. Like, so what is this covenant? Then how is this covenant a hujjah and evidence? Or how does it help us in the dunya, in not disbelieving in Allah? Yeah, so it's, it, uh, as it was mentioned, like uh, it's part of our fitra or something. Mumtaz did then. The covenant, even though this occurrence is happening, we have forgotten it. We have been made to forget, uh, made to forget it. But the effect of it is still remains with us. So in the fitra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ingrained in our fitra the belief in him. And the belief in his existence and that he's the Lord. And naturally, if he is the one who is in control of everything, then he is the one who deserves to be worshipped. This is simple logic. Someone who is in control of everything is the one that should be worshipped because others are incapable and are totally dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the covenant. So, so, so the covenant is, a, is an evidence and a hujjah, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still will not uh, uh, give adab uh, to the people until they have received the revelation. They have received the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not give adab, we do not punish anyone until we have uh, sent a messenger. But but still, yani this covenant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so, so that you're not able to say on the day of judgment that we were, uh, we were ignorant of this and heedless of this. So this refers to the athar, the, the, the effect of this covenant that remained in our fitrah. So this is this message that has been ingrained in our fitrah because of this covenant that we have a creator who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is in control of everything in the universe. Like, this is one thing that it could refer to as it refers to in Surah Al-Ra'ad as well. Surah Al-Ra'ad is Surah Makkiyah. So it's referring to the mushrikeen uh, by saying And it can also refer here because the context is more 
يعني about the Yahud and the Munafiqeen, right? The, it's, it's more about the Yahud and the Munafiqeen. <coughs> it's also about the Mushrikeen because it's a response to their, to their objection as well. But if we say that this, the context is uh, more about the Yahud and the Munafiqeen from amongst the Yahud, then it could refer to the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken from the Yahud of believing in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That they would, they would believe in the Messenger of Allah who will be sent towards them. And also that they would, they would tell the truth to the people. The covenant that was taken from the ulama of Yahud. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لا, ليس هذا. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ Now, this one. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the people who have been given the book, لَتُبَيِّنُنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَ That you will be, you will, you will explain the book to the people and you will not hide it from them. فَنَبَذُوهُ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِهِمْ So it can also refer to that covenant. This is the tajjih and preference of Imam, Imam Al-Tabari. وَيَقَطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلْ What is the meaning of وَيَقَطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ Oh no, before that, before that. What is the use or what is the benefit of مِنْ بَعْدِ مِتَاقِهِ After it has been affirmed. Like the covenant, if it is a covenant, then it must have been affirmed. And it must have been tightened and confirmed. So why mention مِنْ بَعْدِ مِتَاقِهِ For emphasis, perhaps. For emphasis and to and to add to uh, the kind the, uh, yani, to the condemnation of this act of theirs, and how despicable their act is. So to add to emphasize this fact, min ba'di mithaqihi after it was was affirmed. To add emphasis so that it it, it expresses the. Uh, despicableness of their, this act of theirs that is to break the covenant what is the meaning of means to break break and cut what Allah has commanded to be maintained and kept connected. And you salah to connect something. Wasala yasilu to connect something. Wasala yasilu to connect something. This expression in Arabic is used when it refers to some sort of ties, whether it be ties of kinship, whether it be some other types, uh, 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 other ties, right? Any sort of ties between <clears throat> two parties. <clears throat> How uh, maintaining those ties is referred to in Arabic as waslu. وصلوا العلاقة مثلا to to keep the 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 ties maintained and connected. So here Allah says they break what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has <coughs> commanded them to maintain and to uh, to keep it connected. So is it only referring to ties of kinship, or is it general in in terms of all ties, whether it be ties of kinship and the ties that are uh, religious in nature, like the ties between us and other Muslims? So we have a tie, and you know, we have a relation uh, amongst ourselves as Muslims that we must, we must aid each other in musibah. So is it is it general or is it specific to the ties of kinship? It's general. <laughs> it's general. Because Allah says, He didn't mention any particular ties. He just said, Ism Mausul. Remember, Ism Mausul. Is am is a mosul you feed the umum. Alism al mosul you feed al umum. It it indicates generality. Ma amar Allah be yusal. All that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to maintain. All that. It is inclusive of ties of kinship and the ties of religion. So this is am. And we cannot make it specific to a particular thing except with a dalil. So the asl is, the default is that when Ism Mosul is used, it is general in all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to maintain. And we and if we want to make it specific, khas, we need to have the deal. Why you fil ard? How do they create mischief and spread corruption in the land? Why you fil ard? Kayf? Okay. Okay. Kayf? Physical uh, 
يعني corruption in the land or is it also uh, metaphorical corruption in the land يعني يعني حسي ومعنوي او فقط حسي كلاهما كلاهما سنتر all types of corruption ممتاز جدا ممتاز جدا why because it is عام it's general يفسدون في الارض the fi'l the fi'l is also عام this is uh, يعني for those who know in usul al-fiqh we say al-af'al nakirat al-af'al nakirat al-af'al nakirat so nakira is عام right it's uh, ويفسدون في الارض يعني all sorts of all sorts of all sorts of corruption ويفسدون ويفسدون في الارض uh, طبعا if nakira is عام and it is mentioned in the siyaq of nafi or nahi or istifham so this this needs to be looked into a little bit. Like we should do it not it is not mentioned. It does, it does not mention what type of ifsad. So it is عام. The asal is that it is عام. We should do it not It's a nakira which which is عام. طيب. Also a source of corruption. This includes the corruption of kufr and uh, of, of of wrongdoings of sins, which causes, which is which results in the in 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 in, in hardships. Upon the people. And why do calamities fall on people? ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيد الناس. يعني hardships and corruption has spread in the land and the seas في البر والبحر due to what the people have earned. يعني due to their أعمال, due to their أعمال. So this, these, these مفسدين, these منافقين, these كفار, they're not just uh, a, 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 the, the corruption is not limited to the kufr and their sins rather they are a cause for us for, 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 for calamities to befall the Muslims and for, for uh, hardships to, be, to befall the Muslims so the, the inflation takes place the prices go high why do they go high? because the people go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have infl- inflation we have uh, unemployment we have uh, uh, you know, ضيق الرزق, and all of these hard, all types of hardship. Uh, we have, uh, uh, there is, uh, يعني, there, there is no security, there is no peace. Why? Because of the a'mal of the people. So these munafiqeen, ya ikhwan, wherever they may be, wherever they may be, they are people who should be fought against. They should be refuted vehemently because of their, the harms that they bring about uh, to the Muslims, ulaika humul khasirun. Why the ishara with ulaika, which is for faraway objects? Ulaika humul khasirun. Why ishara with ulaika, which is for faraway objects? that they are far from Allah Rahman and they are despicable people. They are far from the uh, far from the khayr and far from the goodness. So they are despicable. Naam. So ulaika. And they are far from khayr so, and they are despicable. So ulaika. They, those people, those people, those far away, you know, dirty people. Ulaika. Humul khasirun. How is emphasis added in this, in the khabar? How was emphasis added? What are the articles of emphasis that are being used here? Hi, Shiba. What are the articles of emphasis be, that, that are used here? The Whom? They are the ones. They are the only. As if they are the only. They are the only losers. Are they the only losers or there are losers other than them as well? Hi, Shabab. Are they the only losers or are there lose- other losers as well? There are other, other losers. There are other losers as well. But this ayah, just to add emphasis, as if, and just focus on these people for now, as if they are the only losers in order to uh, drive you away from 
from, from, their, from their evil, in order to drive you away from their evil and from these acts. That as if they are the only losers, just stay away from them. Right now, just, let's just focus on these people, stay away from these people. And uh, yani this, is, this is the fa'ida of the, of the ta'kid and emphasis that is added with humul khasim, as if they are the only, only losers. Um, 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 there are a few questions here that I wanted to ask. I think because it's it's uh, the adhan has been called here, so inshallah we'll stop here. Inshallah we'll continue in the in the next class with this ayah. Inshallah, and I missed uh, one ayah here. Allah understand. I think كيف تكفرون بالله صح كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يموتكم ثم يحييكم ثم إليه ترجعون okay quickly what 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 sort of istifham is here what is what is 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 this a genuine question or is it a rhetorical question كيف تكفرون بالله rhetorical rhetorical يعني how how can it be possible تعجب this is an astonish is an astonishment a question an astonishment this is called istifham that is done out of astonishment. How can you disbelieve in Allah? While Allah is the one, why the name of Allah has been used here? Because we, we said that Allah is the name that is jami' for all of the sifat of Allah. It's comprehensive of all of the sifat of Allah. And it is usually mentioned in contexts where uh, it is intend, intended to denote the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how can you disbelieve in Allah? Any Allah, the great Allah. How can you disbelieve in him? وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ While you were while you were dead, he gave you lifeless and he gave you life. فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ Then he will cause you to die again. ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ How were you amwat before you were even alive? What does this mean? وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا You are in giving birth to Sorry? You weren't given birth to. No, I couldn't understand, Habibi, what you were saying. You, you weren't given birth to. Yeah, you weren't given birth to. Ahsans. Mumtaz. Kuntu amwatan. Maut can also, it also refers to lifelessness. When you're lifeless, it's also a state of maut. So maut is not necessarily death after life. Maut also refers to, to uh, lifelessness, which is why uh, the kuffar will say in the Yom Qiyamah, قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَمَتَّ نَسْنَتَيْنِ وَأَحْيَيْتَ نَسْنَتَيْنِ Oh Allah, you caused us to become amwat twice and caused us to, uh, or, or brought us to life twice. So what is, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause them to die twice? The first imata, it's in, uh, the intent by it that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them as lifeless. So that is also imata, that, that is also maut. Okay, uh, last question and we end at this. ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Ilayhi turja'un. Why ilayhi is being mentioned before turja'un? Why not thumma turja'una ilayhi? What is the use of mentioning the ma'mul before the amil? Ma'mul, yani, you can, for now, just refer to it as the ma'fool bihi. Point to the fact that you would, um, Surely, exclusively return to Allah. Ah, then you, you exclusively to Allah will you return. To Him will you return. Yani not to anyone else. Not to anyone else. Turja'una uh, ilayhi would be like you will return to Him and there's a possibility to someone else as well. But ilayhi turja'un is like iyyaka na'bud. Ilayhi turja'un. And only to Allah will you return. Will you return or will you be returned? You'll be returned. Will you be returned? Not, because it's not tarji'oon. This is passive voice. Turja'oon. Turja'oon. You, you will be made to return. Passive voice. Passive voice. Taktafi bihada al-qadr wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahbihi wa jama'in. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha 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 nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.